the blue city of Shefshaun, a stunning town of blue washed houses and streets set into the side of the Rift mountain range in northern Morocco. It's not hard to see why it's become known as the Blue Pearl of Morocco. We arrived in Shefshaun late yesterday afternoon. As we rounded a bend in the mountain road, the breathtaking blue city suddenly came into view. What a reveal! But the surprises didn't end there. When we reached our accommodation, we stepped through a gate in the wall and were instantly rendered speechless. The beautiful courtyard and traditional Moroccan architecture just blew us away. The rooms were just as impressive, adorned with Moroccan decor and colourful lanterns. And to top it all off, the Riyadh even had a pool with fantastic views across the blue city. It was all too much for Lydia. Shefshaun has been at the top of our bucket list for years and the sheer beauty of the place brought tears of joy to her eyes. <sighs> and the best part, we haven't even explored the city yet. To make the most of every minute we have in Shefshaun, we're up at dawn to watch the sunrise before breakfast. Good morning from Shefshaun. Good morning. It's about six o'clock in the morning and the sun's going to rise just behind us here. And we're going to spin you around so you can see the beautiful blue colours of the town. What a magical way to start the day. And the sun is just peeking over those mountains and lighting up the mountains behind them. And it won't be long before the city itself is bathed in sunlight. Yeah, there's not many people around at the moment. We're probably the only ones. We can hear roosters crowing and donkey's brain. <laughs> it's a good time of the day to explore. It's magic. And we're going to explore more of Shashawan today and yep. see the blue city. get to see it in the daylight. Yeah. Yeah, the rooms up there, our room, there's this big window here under the, behind the tree. This morning we have a local guide to show us around the Medina, explain the history of the city, take us to some of the most photogenic spots, and most importantly, stop us from getting lost. Not that getting lost is a bad thing in Chefshaun, it's the best way to explore the city. Just up the road from our Riyadh, there's a path that leads down to the Ras El Mar waterfall, a freshwater spring that supplies the town with drinking water. It's a lovely spot to enjoy a fresh orange juice as the locals keep the oranges cool in the spring water. This is also where the women of the town used to gather to do their laundry and to have a chat, and you can still see a few people washing their clothes here today. You wanted to do some washing, didn't you? Yeah, no, I'll give that one a miss. Shefshaun is a place for wandering. It's not a place with lots of must-see attractions or sites. The city itself is the site, with its winding blue alleyways, beautiful architecture, and a spectacular mountain backdrop. At times you have to pinch yourself just to make sure it isn't some big blue dream. 
it's no wonder that Chefchaouen is one of the most photographed places in Morocco. Chefchaouen is relaxed and charming, especially in the mornings before the day trippers arrive. This is the best time to explore, get to know the locals and see them going about their day-to-day -day life. The main question I had when I came to Chefchaouen was why is the Blue City blue? And the answer that we got was one, keep the mosquitoes away. It helps the mosquitoes unattracted to the blue colour, so it keeps the mosquitoes out of the town. And uh, two, it's very cooling, yes. so it uh, cools the house down, and it does feel really cool when you're actually walking amongst the blue. And three, it's really tr tranquil. It's a tranquil colour, so it's very calming. It's very calming. And the other reason was the Jews populated Chefchaouen quite a lot after World War II, so the blue was part of their flag. But these days, it's a tourism thing. <laughs> They've painted all the houses blue to keep the tourists coming. It's a very calming colour. Wouldn't mind painting my house. Well. Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> colour. It's lovely. We've come back to the hotel after walking around Chefchaouen all morning and it's nice and hot so we're all ready for a swim in the pool. Here we go. Whoa. It's lovely and fresh after a walk around Chefchaouen all morning. But it takes your breath away. Back again in the afternoon after a dip, cool off. It's certainly a lot busier. I think all the day trippers are here now. You've got no chance of getting a photo of this pretty blue street without other people in the way. So we're doing a bit of shopping. I should get it for her. Why? <laughs> yeah. it's, She's um, but I'm just interested whether that's nice. <laughs> the trick is to come out as early as possible. It gets really. There wasn't many people around early this morning, but now it's busy. You want to get out early. The coffee is calling. Okay. This is the Grand Mosque of Chef Shaolin okay. and that's the Casbah. So we found the Casbah after winding through many little streets. Yeah, we got lost for a bit. But now yeah. we're rocking the Casbah. <laughs> The name Chef Shaolin is Arabic. Chef meaning to look and Shaolin meaning horns. So Chef Shaolin literally means look at the horns, referring to the two mountain peaks that rise above the town. Chef Shaolin was founded in 1471. Ironically, for such a pretty peaceful place, it began as a fortress to resist Portuguese invasion. This fortress, or Casbah, is located in the main square and is the oldest part of the city. Can we go in? Yep. Hello. So it's um, 10 dirham to come in, $1.50 Australian. Okay. 
Okay, we're inside. It's actually 60 dirham each. It was 10 dirham each for Moroccan citizens, so uh, a little bit more for tourists, which is understandable. Don't mind. Within the walls of the Kasbah lies a lush garden, offering a peaceful escape from the hustle and bustle of the main square outside. It's a lot cooler in here. It is a lot cooler in here too. It's probably the shade too from all the trees. And... We've got a tower and we've got a prison. Let's go check out the prison. Well, I'll lock you away. Quite lonely in here, wouldn't it? It would have been quite isolating. the inside of the Kasbah with its gardens and ramparts with Chef Chowan and its blue houses in the background and the mountains behind that. What a beautiful afternoon. How's your coffee? A bit of caffeine kick. Caffeine. Yeah. It's late in the day, but we've got to climb up a mountain. <laughs> and we do, we're going to go and climb the mountain to see the sunset. Perched high on the hill overlooking Chefchaouen is the Spanish Mosque. Built in the 1920s, it was never actually used as a mosque, but it's reputed to be the best spot in town to watch the sunset. The only way to reach it though, is by hiking 20 minutes up a well-trodden hillside path. After spending the day exploring the Medina, Lydia's legs weren't up for the challenge, so I made the trek solo. Just walking along uh, the track high above the town of Chefchaouen up to the Spanish Monastery uh, which has great views of the sunset from the t over the town and the mountains beyond. <laughs> sitting in front of the Spanish Mosque and it's a great view over the Chepchaun city below. Oh, wow, sun's about to set. It's awesome. I don't think the camera can do it justice.
Sun's down now and the lights are coming on in Chef Chowan. And I think it's time to head back down the mountain. Thank you so much for joining us in Chef Chowan today. It's such a beautiful place and we hope that we've inspired you to come visit and experience it for yourself. We'd recommend spending at least two days here. If you've enjoyed our video, we'd love it if you could subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the rest of our Moroccan adventure. We're travelling to Fez in our next episode and we'll be visiting the Roman ruins of Volubilis and the imperial city of Meknes on the way. We hope that you'll come raving with us then. Bye for now.